good afternoon. I'm Monisa Klein here at the GBTA Broadcast Studio here in Dallas, Texas. And joining me today is Lori Reiches, who is the president and CEO at the Airlines Reporting Corporation. Everybody knows ARC. Lori, welcome. Thank you. And two and a half years later, I just want to say again, congratulations on your appointment as president and CEO. It's so well deserved. Thank and you. I know a lot of people were cheering for you and very happy for that uh, that elevation. So well deserved. Thank so you. Congratulations. Appreciate that. Thank you. So lots going on in the industry, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's never a dull moment. For so, sure. A lot of discussion. I know we've been talking about new distribution capability for many years. Um, how should and it's actually coming to fruition, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. been a lot of activity, I should say, to Absolutely. really move it forward. So how should a travel organization prepare for NDC? What advice do you have on that? Uh, well, first of all, you're right. We've been talking about it for a long time, and now the implementations are, are taking off. Uh, for uh, ARC, it's been really that planning of the capabilities that you need to add to enable NDC in your systems to support your customers. Yeah. So we've been working on that for years. Um, and I would encourage everyone to do the same, right? This, in, how do you do that? You talk to your partners, your technology partners, your key suppliers, you understand what they're trying to achieve with NDC, right? and you start to build out the capabilities. For us, that includes being able to take an NDC transaction into our settlement system and apply all of the processes to that and the reporting that is output from a sale that goes to the agency so it can go to the corporate buyer, kind of keeping all of that whole. And we've been really successful with that. And we have probably two dozen airlines now that have implemented that capability. And um, that's been the way we've approached getting NDC ready. Um, NDC at scale is also you know, producing challenges that need to be worked through sure. around workflow and data processing. And we've been you know, involved in the industry and in trying to uh, support those initiatives as well. And that's really... In summary, my advice, like understand what it means. It's got a ton of potential. Uh, engage with the people that are in your, right. you know, in your world that you work with and, right. and create a roadmap for how yeah. to implement it. And take the time to understand. Don't be scared, right? Don't be Absolutely. scared of it. Don't, don't, don't. Don't try to fight it. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. It's for good reason, right? Absolutely. It's yep. modernizing air retailing, exactly. which we all need. We right. know we need to do. And, right. and change is, can be messy, but it, it's also just part of life and yeah. you just have to work together to sort it out. Yeah. So that's NDC, which that's I know NDC. is, is yeah. um, it's, it's a big part of, it's consuming a big part of what people are focused on, right? So right. Mm -hmm. beyond NDC, if you put yeah. that aside, mm -hmm. um, what trends do you see impacting corporate travel in the near future? Like what are, what's next? What, yeah. what are some trends you know, that you see next? The, the biggest trend, you're right, NDC has taken a lot of the right. oxygen, right. but there are some other really big things happening. And the one that I would really call out is the move to the direct channel. It's not insignificant. We have seen a 10 point move from the indirect channel to the direct channel over the last couple of years. That 10 percentage points is, is big. And yes, some of that is leisure, but some of that is corporate as well. And we think the corporate piece is only going to accelerate. Um, we think that the direct channel offers a lot of options for travelers that are very desirable and that they can be provided to the corporate traveler while still maintaining the corporate policy right. and uh, program and the duty of care and the discounts mm. and all of those things. And that's why we invested in a company called New Travel, mm -hmm. now just announced it's being rebranded as Traverse Technologies. And we invested in them in 2019. And their mission is to work with suppliers. They're starting primarily with airlines, but other suppliers as well, to help an airline uh, take their website and their uh, their apps and turn them into a corporate booking platform. And we're very um, bullish on this future because we see it as uh, a blended program that includes both uh, the direct booking capabilities but all the services of the indirect channel. And we are, you know, big proponents of the TMCs and agencies are sure. critically important to ARC, but we think the future is, you know, a blended approach to the marketplace. Right. There's blended in everything, approach to the exactly. marketplace and also the type of travel, right? You've seen exactly. a lot of business travelers now adding on leisure. So you've got, I don't want to overuse the word leisure, but a combination, right? Of, Absolutely. Of travel type, so. Absolutely, and you know, the, the shift to the direct channel is, uh, and maybe the content fragmentation, if you will, is also creating a trend of uh, a much 
greater need for new data insights, uh, combining data in new ways, uh, benchmark data, reference data, some of those uh, really important pieces of information for managing a corporate travel program need to be rede re redesigned. Right. And so that's a, a big macro trend I would right. call out as well. So speaking of data, obviously mm -hmm. ARC has a lot of data yes. that you have access to and that you see, so you mm -hmm. see trends. How has corporate travel changed over the past three years? I mean, we've kind of touched on a lot of different yeah. subjects, but yeah. what are the greatest changes that you've seen over yeah. the last last three years? I think the data would support the blended travel that we just talked about. Uh, one of the first things we had to do uh, this year is really re-examine our model for identifying whether a transaction that flows through ARC is a business trip or a leisure trip. Right. Traditionally, that's always been sort of self-identified by the agency. If this agency is a corporate agency, all the transactions from that agency were considered business travel. Well, now with machine learning and AI, we've been able to refine our model and look for other mm. travel patterns and trip attributes and get a finer view of business versus leisure. And it's yielding some interesting data points. Uh, for example, the blended travel is, is real. Yeah, <laughs> the average right. corporate trip pre-pandemic was three to four days. Makes sense, right? One day in travel, your business is on the road for the week. Now it's uh, five to seven days. Interesting. And I don't think work is taking two to three days more. Yeah. It's people are adding on. Yep. They're, they're creating taking a blended, the they're, uh, you know, they're on a business trip and they add some time. The other, um, and that's like th over a third of the trips that are corporate have gone from three to four days on average to five to seven. So wow. it's a pretty substantial yeah. trend uh, as demonstrated by the data. Um, the other piece is advanced purchase. Uh, you know, pre-pandemic, it was um, typically, you know, a few days less than what it is now, which is 14 days out. And that tells me there's more planning going on. And right. again, it kind of supports the blended corporate, some personal time trips. So, you know, those are the big um, trends that we're seeing in the data. Wow. Mm -hmm. So exciting. It's yeah, it like is. You think about all that we've been through, all the things that, that have things that have yeah. evolved, right? Yeah. And the transformation that's taking place. It's, yeah. it's exciting times, right? It is exciting right. times. And I would, I would say there's one other data point, which I don't want it to be um, too sombering, but we still see the recovery of corporate travel is, sure. is lagging. It's still predicted this year to end about 15 percentage points below 2019 levels. But I wouldn't want to end on that in right. the sense that there's just so much interesting stuff going on happening. at this point right. in, in corporate travel. And yep. I think we're all going to have yep. plenty of exciting work ahead. And hopefully we'll get to a point where we're not com comparing back to 2019, exactly. right? I think exactly. we're just about to hopefully make that We're turn. getting real close. We're getting close With to that. With leisure, we're way beyond yeah. it. So for sure. Like, yeah, for, for sure. sure. Yeah. Lori, always a pleasure to see you and to Thank visit you. with you. Thank and you. Uh, so excited for you and your leadership role. And I know Thank there's you. a lot of exciting things happening at, uh, at ARC. Thank you. So well, congratulations. It's a privilege, to, a privilege to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Monisa Klein here at the GBTA Broadcast Studio.